Tyrese Halliburton has reached another level and watching his genius on the court is absolutely incredible. After leading the NBA in assist percentage last season, he has increased it to assisting over half of his teammates' shots while also increasing his usage, points per shot attempt, and assist to usage rate, all while leading the Pacers to the best offense in the NBA. In this breakdown, we're going to dive into how Halliburton pushes the pace, his scoring and decision making, and how he can make every pass needed with both style and flair that is effective and impactful. The biggest joy for me is watching him push the pace early in transition on made baskets especially. You'll notice as soon as he catches the ball, his eyes are down the court, ready to make early pass aheads in the offense. Here against the Hawks, well, uh, awful transition defense. All five players are above the three-point line, makes the easy lob pass for the dunk behind the defense. A dead ball here against the Bucks, with Brooke Lopez taking his sweet time getting back. A simple pass ahead allows an easy uncontested layup with no rim protection. Another example here against the Bucks is Halliburton rides the wave or drives a cross in transition. Three players collapse on him and he finds the easy cut for the dunk. Halliburton's great at riding this wave and finding shooters as well. Draws two Knicks here, makes the easy pass to Nemhard for the walk-in dunk. Another example against the Knicks here who collapse in the paint this time. He makes the easy decision for the trailer Nemhard for the three. Riding the wave essentially takes the defense's attention and puts it on the ball, so finding shooters opposite ends up being open. Now, the first option in any transition offense is the rim run. Here you see Halliburton taking a scan of the court, getting a good outlet position, and then being able to notice that the rim runner here is ahead of Bobby Portis, walking in for the easy dunk against the Bucks again. And then another example here against the Celtics, where he notices that Miles Turner has beaten Horford, and you can see the easy pass across that is just an incredible court vision for Halliburton. Off a made basket here against the Clippers, pushes the pace, notices that Toppin's behind the defense, and throws a no-look pass for the easy dunk. One of my favorite parts about the Pacers offense in Halliburton is the pass aheads make sure the broadcast has to actually change the way that they show replays and players because they get the ball up the court so quickly and so fast after even made baskets that the broadcast will have to cut off and go right to the pass that was already made. Uh, Toppin has been a favorite of Halliburton where he's able to find him ahead early in transition to get behind the defense. Uh, your transition defense has to be on point and that's what teams like the Bucks have struggled with this whole season. You see Toppin get behind for easy dunks but these pitch ahead passes from Halliburton put immediate pressure on the defense usually after one or no dribbles allowing the Pacers to attack a defense that is not set and is usually cross match so it gives the Pacers easier scoring opportunities if the early pushes or pass aheads are not there you'll see the Pacers go into a five out look in transition so that means the trailers are now on the wings instead of like a normal trail position and this makes it easier to find guards for open shooting opportunities uh, when the defense is recovering back to the paint you'll see the trail threes in transition for players like Buddy Heald. One of the biggest advantages of playing five out is to have players like Miles Turner trail to play. So when his defender helps on drives or loads like the nail in transition, which is common in the NBA, he's open for these flip threes in transition. So here Halliburton draws two and the gap help this easy flip to Miles Turner for a three as the trail man. This is an action that they run in their half court offense a lot as well, especially adding Siakam, this slot to slot flip action is going to be run often. They ran this a lot for Siakam in Toronto, especially under Nick Nurse. You're going to see them run this often in the Pacers offense, as well as the keep action where Halliburton has the option to give or shoot. The most common action in their half-court offense is a ghost screen, where a guard looks like they're going to set a ball screen, fakes it, and slips out to the three-point line. Uh, they run this all the time, especially with like Heald and Halliburton. Causes a lot of problems, especially teams that like to switch a lot of these screens. Look at the problems this causes with both Naismith and Heald setting these ghost screens at the same time. It's just complete confusion. Halliburton can read the game perfectly. In transition, this also creates a lot of problems because they can slip out early without any coverage as well. The beauty of these ghost screens is the five-out spacing allows Halliburton to turn the corner 
easily because typically speaking in defensive coverages if it's no screen it's no switch so it's like a switch on contact so some of these ghost screens you'll see the defender's hips open up and that's all it takes to allow Halliburton to turn the corner so a team like the Celtics they have Drew Holiday pressuring him they'll have him stay attached on these ghost screens and this allows Halliburton to turn the corner with usually little or no rim protection because the bigs are always spaced out. When teams try to load up and gap help in their five out defense, you'll see the Pacers go to flare action or they'll flare the top player, uh, especially in five out. You can see the big pulled out allows for open layups. They also combine this with a ghost screen into a flare screen randomly makes it almost impossible to defend in their flow offense. The Pacers spacing plus Halliburton's ability to thrive in chaos is absolutely awesome to watch. He'll find shooters if you help at all, especially off players like Buddy Heald. On these drives, his decision-making is so good. He can see Bruce Brown here before anybody else does, cutting behind the defense. The five-out spacing allows him to see where the help comes from and make easy driving kick decisions, and it forces the bigs to have to guard somebody. As we can see here with Zubach with no chance when Halliburton finds the transition trigger for the three. The bread and butter of the Pacers offense is their pick and roll game with Halliburton handling. Going against drop coverage, he absolutely destroys it. They can pick and pop three. He's deadly off a of three point shooting, shooting 42% from threes when he's handling in the pick and roll, which is an absurd number, usually off the dribble, obviously in the pick and roll. Not only these pull up threes, but his ability to come off and hit the mid range pull up and his floater game, especially against drop coverage, is outstanding. He's got a great feel for where the defense is playing, where he can get his shot from, uh, his balance, and usually can find pockets of space to come off and attack and basically keep the defense guessing if he is going to pass, if he's going to shoot, and to be able to manipulate what he is looking to do uh, against drop coverage in particular. The threat of his scoring also opens up his passing game so he can recognize pretty easily where the tag is coming from because he puts a lot of pressure on these downhill drives forcing help from either the big or a player has to tag the roll man so you can see here the low man it comes over early that means the skip to the opposite corner is wide open for a buddy healed corner three and then certain players they may designate to tag off of like obi toppin randall cheats inside on the roll man here and he's able to find toppin wide open for the corner three if nobody tags the roll man then of course the roll man becomes open and his ability to manipulate the defense creates even more opportunities here he attacks and then looks off lopez finds miles turner wide open for the dunk awful bulls defense means halliburton can make an easy drop off pass so no tag on the roll man usually means a drop off or a bounce pass against different coverages it doesn't matter what you throw at him he's able to find players both the knicks and the bulls tend to hedge at times play a little bit more aggressive on the ball that allows halliburton to basically take what the defense is giving him, draw out that defender on the ball, and then find the roll man for easy layups. Against these aggressive coverages as well, you'll see the pick and pop threat of players like Miles Turner open up the offense more, where you'll see more short rolls or rolling into like the mid-range space around the elbows. If teams are going to try and take the ball out of Halliburton's hands, you'll see him make quick early passes to this mid-range pick and pop uh, as well as three pointers depending on the coverage and where the ball screen is being set so for instance you'll see miles turner pick and pop to the three mid-range but for the most part uh halliburton loves to go against the grain of the ball screen and attack downhill first you'll see him kind of reject it and go away from the screen and then draw the big and then find the pick and pop three. This works especially well against teams that like to ice the ball screen uh, or weak the ball screen, depending on the side of the floor, where you'll see them take the ball screen action away or force them to go away from the ball screen. And then Halliburton can kind of play in space and is able to find the pick and pop three point shooters by drawing those two defenders and forcing help first and then finding the spot up pick and pop threes. 
Halliburton's signature move, and one that he's gone to a lot more this year, is the step back three, especially out of the pick and roll. He'll use the pick and roll as the initial advantage and then go to the step back three. So if the player guarding the pick and roll goes under or sags off or gets caught you know, too low, he'll come off it and then go back to the step back three. He'll also attack the aggressive ball screen coverage. So if they're going to put a guard on Miles Turner, you'll see him attack the aggressive ball screen coverage and then go into the step back three, look to go downhill, which he's done a fantastic job of, and then step back three into space. Also, if teams are going to switch, so if you see a lot of teams switch, start switching ball screens, especially bigs onto them, that's when he goes into step back three. He likes to dance a little bit, a little bit too much for my liking, but he'll dance, go between the legs, between the legs, and then go to a step back three or sort of like a hang three uh, and escape to one side and look to hit the open shot. Not only the pacing and the playmaking, but Tyrese Halliburton's love and joy for the game was what makes him so brilliant. And speaking of brilliant, this breakdown is sponsored by brilliant.org. Before diving into breakdowns, I love looking at strategy behind NBA teams and their analytics. While the basic numbers are simple enough to comprehend, understanding how these numbers are calculated clarifies what these mean and the math behind them, which always makes things more interesting. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Not only is Brilliant fun and interactive, but it makes reaching your learning goals easier with effective ways to learn with thousands of lessons from basic to advanced content. Head over to brilliant.org slash half court hoops to get started for free for 30 days and 20% off an annual plan by using my URL. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash half court hoops. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.